Well, hello everybody. Welcome back down into the dungeon for another weekly episode of Lord of the Aphids with JT Bear. But, um, really, first off I want to start by saying a huge thank you for all the uh, thoughts and concerns and well wishes and stuff. I'm feeling dramatically better. I'm running at at least 75%, which um, <laughs> is about 200% better than a couple days ago. So, yeah, that is awesome. Much love to you guys right back. Really appreciate all that. Down here... Things are going kind of as you would expect for, uh, well, the amount of neglect that they've been receiving over the last week or so. Well, look, I'm all bright pink now. So there are some, some good things, there are some bad things, there are some ugly things, but that's, that's life in the garden. So here we've got all of these assorted peppers, the red demon here. It's got some strange sort of growth going on, but it is finally putting some roots out at the base hasn't died off on me yet. The one that's really got me just weirded right out is this one here. I mean, that's really only because I haven't taken the time to look it up and find out what's going on. But I have noticed, I mean, this is um, the ahi calabaza. The other, one of the other ahis I've got, back over here, the ahi penic, is starting to do the same thing on some of its leaves. So I'm thinking maybe some sort of deficiency. But we'll get back to the Folgers peppers in a minute. The ahi lemon drop here, it's destined to be a Folgers pepper soon. Coffee can pepper, I guess I shouldn't be throwing brand names out there because you know, for all that I use those things, they're still not exactly sponsored my channel. The ahi pineapple, still looking a little rough. Starting to get some roots out the bottom. So maybe we'll get some uh, upper development soon, it would be nice. The ahi, a huich pan. So many of these I just can't pronounce. We got some roots. Yeah, we do. Nice. So a lot of these are getting ready to be uh, moved into coffee cans, I think. Sand dollar. Anything yet? Anything? No? No? It's too bad. Nice looking plant, though. Always enjoyed the broad leaves on these. Nice to see that it's probably going to be, you know, true to form. But I mean, those sand dollars didn't really have anything to cross-pollinate with, so I'd be kind of surprised if it wasn't. It's the Antohi Sweet Pepper here. Not a lot of growth on that, but it hasn't fallen over dead yet, unlike others I could mention. So, I'm still hopeful, still hopeful. Yeah, one of the first losses here is one of the candy apples. That's okay, because I have a couple more of those. So it's not the only one. This hot lemon's coming along nicely. Again, starting to get some decent, there we go, starting to get some decent root development between the cups. Here's that ahi hab that I was so hesitant to transplant. It's just, again, it hasn't fully flopped over yet, so I'm kind of hopeful, but not very. Another ahi back here, the Guyana. Nothing coming out the bottom there yet, but all things in time. These little cardboard trays are just perfect for these double cups though. It's another tragic loss, the white dwarf pepper there. Got a reaper that's actually sticking around for us, that's nice. M.A. Wartrix, what's this one back here? It's the Shishito. More of a spearheaded point on that one. Interesting leaf formation. What do we have here? The Sugar Rush Peach. Slowly growing, slowly growing. I think the slightly lower temperature down here really is not helping my peppers advance as much as they could. Now, let's talk about peppers. This is labeled as a chocolate maruga. This does not even look like a pepper plant to me. Reminds me uh, a lot more of an eggplant. So if anybody wants to throw some feedback on that one, pretty sure that's not a chocolate maruga pepper though. So I'm going to have to try those again. Not quite sure how I could have screwed up those types of seeds, but, you know, such is life. Orange BOC cross Copenhagen, or Orange Primo cross BOC, pardon me. It's another one of our tragedies. I think there were four since the last update, but that is life. This paper lantern seems to be doing fairly well. Are these the other two candy apples, or the other two hot lemon? Hot lemon. So, they're coming along nicely. That means these are the candy apples. At least they're still alive, so, you know, it's better than it could be. Little chocolate bootla here, starting to 
look like an actual pepper plant. Also looks like it needs to go feed some aphids to the fishies, such as life. Another sand dollar down here. And all of the tomatoes. You'll notice this jungle's got a slightly different shape to it. There is a reason for that. Was that poor ahi panic? It was buried under the tomatoes. I didn't see it to water it for a couple of days. We just watered it though, it'll probably come back. But yeah, the reason all of this is different is up over there, and we'll get to that in a second. But before we leave the table here, move the sugar rush cream and the little billy goat. Because look at this ahi panic. This thing is spread right out, it's doing so well. And these roots are just. That's crazy to me. Lots of growth in there. This thing is emptying a can like every two or three days. And there are lots of flowers on here that have started to change color, indicating they might actually be starting to put some pepper pods together for me. Should be sweet. There's the sh uh, super chili. I was going to say sugar rush, but we're not quite there yet. Don't have a sugar rush in a coffee can yet, but. I'm very pleased with how well this plant is doing and uh, ultimately this double cup Kratky reservoir whatever this system of gardening falls under indoor dirt hydro whatever this seems to be how I'm going to be able to keep peppers alive in my basement garden so I'm really excited and uh, glad we drink so much coffee look at that even half of those flowers turn into peppers, that's more super chilies than I got from my garden last year. Can't complain about that. And one other thing, while we're still on this table, here we have the crimson red. Hasn't really grown much as a plant, right? But, look at that. That is a second pepper on there. And the first one Still nice and firm, nice and solid, hasn't like shown any signs of dying off or anything, so that is super cool. That is officially my second pod, and it was basically that size when I discovered it, so surprise! Gotta like that. I like a happy surprise in the garden, you know? And down here on this paper lantern in the coffee can, we can see some new growth springing up there. So it's good. I think for the most part, things on this table are progressing fairly well. A couple of little losses and that's not great. I still haven't pulled out this Ahi Peruvian. I think the chicken buckets is a no-go. These other two plants are gonna stay in them but everything else is going into the coffee cans. The first fatality was a chicken bucket. They're out. That's all there is to it. Alright, uh, I'm thinking of fatalities. What's wrong with that picture? Now two out of these three lights have uh, retired themselves on me both flashing away I believe Rev told me what the fix is on that but uh, escapes me at the moment so as you can see the uh, light spectrum down here has changed considerably most things seem to be doing alright we got a couple of stray tomatoes that never made it back onto the shelf after my rearranging but I'd like to get that rosemary into some better light it's kind of uh, pretty much only shining on the sage right now which is wonderful come turkey time, but you know, the rosemary could use some loving too. Scanning up is another couple of tomatoes that never made it back onto the shelf. And then here is the jungle. But again, everything's a little shorter, isn't it? Because I kind of figured, what the heck? And I made a whole bunch of cuttings, fully expecting most of them to die, and I was right. I mean, this one here, I didn't even have leaves on it. I just thought maybe it had kind of a nub in there, so give it a go. I didn't put humidomes on anything, which is very unlike me, but, you know, wasn't feeling 100%, so kind of makes perfect sense. Some of them look okay, like this one here. This one here might actually be rooting. This one here, maybe. This one here, I just don't think so somehow, so... We'll have to give it a little while to see how that all develops, but as for the ones that were cut, you can see some nice offshoots already coming on those. So it's going to be a nice bushy bunch of tomatoes this year. 
but at least they're not crowding up over the light and trying to crawl through the stairs because let's face it Gordon was nibbling on them when they were through the stairs and can hardly give him trouble for that because they're like going to him so yeah anyway moving on we have the lettuce the strange hollow lettuce it has been uh, watered again but it's starting to get kind of nasty in there it's picking up just enough to stay alive but that's about it I think it's about time to worm bin that but it just it's still alive so I let it suffer I guess is how that goes down under the PVC LEDs we've still got a few different assorted peppers we've got this sugar rush cream here so far I'm still not getting any roots out of the bottom of the styrofoam cups I don't know if that's because of the way I plunged those through or kind of what the reason for that would be I thought for sure being smaller cups they would uh, push through roots faster but such is life you live you learn worm bins coming along I'm actually remembering to keep it moist now so that's good bit of a spin around I keep putting stuff in there and it's not overflowing yet so I can only assume something positive is happening see the aphid disposal team hard at work down there I was just shaking quite a few of these plants quite vigorously hence there's some perlite floating in there and there's a couple of leaves but there's a whole lot less aphids than there were <laughs> so back over here on the seedling table little tiny mouse melon these cucumbers are so cute I can't wait until they start to actively produce and I can show you those the ahi fantasies here and here starting to get some true leaves so that's nice this is one of the purple freaks so ultimately I have no idea what that's going to produce for me so that's actually kind of fun hoping for some variety there so the bootla clamshells got three of those seem to be doing all right for us and unless I miss my guess, it looks like they're trying to put out their true leaves as well. Still need to empty out the uh, 72 cell here. Clean it up. Falling a little bit behind in these things, but you know how it goes. What do we have here? It's a Serrano pepper. Not looking terribly happy. But still alive. We got those anchocha cucumbers. These things are so ready to grab onto anything. Suffering a little bit, but not too bad. The bad brains, looking like they could use a little water. And up here, the Lemon Boy Squishies. Got a couple of seeds that sprouted there. And the Lemon Boy Firm. We got some that sprouted back there as well. However, from the dried tomatoes, the Lemon Boys and those ones I found at the install, nothing so far. I'm hoping that's just uh you know these things take time. Got this HJ4 pepper over here, space chilies. Seems to be doing alright. So that's good. Things are, you know, progressing. The dungeon is is the dungeon and the season never really changes down here. Came through here with a pair of scissors and hacked back a whole bunch of mint the other day, walking upstairs, showing it to shocks and say, hey baby, you want some mint? Flop. It's all sitting on top of the toaster oven now, kind of slowly drying that way. But, it is really nice to have like a set it and forget it set up down here, even for something as trivial and cheap as mint. And look at the size of the leaves on this thing though. I mean, those are pretty massive. Compare it to, you know, soil mint. aquaponic mint and those things are huge so yeah oh I haven't checked back there look at that the little shards doing okay quite tiny compared to the ones upstairs in the kitchen window but still technically alive uh, I'm not sure we can say that about that kale though I guess that one didn't make it all the way down into the water line such is life a lot of these kale are going to be heading outside soon because even if it does get cold again, they're kale. They can handle that. And I'd like to start moving plants out there now because I am impatient. It is glorious out there and uh, if it can be used to my gardening benefit, I want to get on that. Still no signs of flowering on this ahi panic in the aquaponics though. 
It would be nice if it did. would like to be able to compare the uh, aquaponic panic to the soil panic. See what kind of heat variation or flavor variation there may be. Anyway, down from here we've got a shelf over there with a bunch of happy little tomato plants and more happy little shard plants. Again, those shards do seem to be doing a lot better than the one in the aquaponics. Don't have a lot of fish work in that ponic garden right now though. Yellow scorpion still not really coming back for me. Sugar Rush Red, on the other hand, looking stronger every day, and I'm pretty sure the Nepalese Bell is actually growing a little bit. So that is super exciting because it's a very cool looking pepper. Here we have, of course, the El Oro de Ecuador. I'd have to say this is probably the nicest looking pepper plant. Uh, I currently have. No signs of flower on it at all yet, but um, I can switch the light, see if that makes a difference. I do still want to try cloning this, and oh, clones, I gotta go back to the table, I didn't show you what's going on with those. I may have screwed those up and have to try again, but yeah, let's go, let's go check that out. Light change. Okay, so there were three of these. I uh, left the lids off overnight once to kind of let it get some fresh air. And then there were, well, three very dead looking plants. One was clearly beyond saving, so it's out. This one here still had some kind of vibrancy to its green. And actually almost looks like it might have a little bit of new growth on it. So I haven't given up on this one. This one here, I think we're done with. So we'll move this out, and ultimately we're down to one that remains. But, I, I do think there might be some hope for that. I don't want to knock out the dirt though and, and find out, so waiting is. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this week's look around at what's growing on in the dungeon. These uh, last few dark days of dungeon gardening. I've got maybe five weeks or so until the calendar says it's, uh, it's my last expected frost date and I can finally plant things outside. Oh, which brings me to my question for the class today. Um, and this, I know to a lot of seasoned gardeners, this may seem like a really stupid question, but bear with me. Um, when it says you can put things out and like direct sow them as soon as you can work the soil, are we still talking as soon as you can work it but after the first or after the last frost or just as soon as you can work it period go ahead plant those suckers out there because I want to really expand our garden this year we'll be talking about that over the coming week and I'd like to get started on that as soon as possible and that a lot of those things say plant as soon as you can work the soil so yeah, feedback on that would be great. Uh, I am, as always, going to take tomorrow, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. So until then, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful time, and uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. Bye.